Okay, so I have to be a little careful what I say here. We received these documents. We didn't know who they were from. We still don't know who they're from. All of these documents are in Farsi. How did you even like start dealing with this? How did you know what we had when documents started coming in? We didn't. The decision was made to translate them. We had to authenticate them. We sent a number of reporters overseas reporting out things in the documents to see if they had actually happened. Has there ever been a major leak out of Iran or the Iranian government ever? Certainly not anything of this magnitude. So I think it's one of the most important leaks ever. I think it, it is on the scale of in the Pentagon Papers or the Snowden documents because it is something that we've never seen before. Never had a major leak of documents from Iran, which is one of the most closed societies in the world. So these are more than 700 pages of documents generated by the Ministry of Intelligence and Security, the MOIS, the more professional uh, bureaucratic intelligence service in Iran. And they document a period in 2014 and 2015 when Iran and the United States and Iraq were all fighting the Islamic State in Iraq. That was sort of the height of the Islamic State. And they consist of everything from cables from intelligence operatives sent back to Tehran about what they're seeing to raw source reports from Iraqis who are working for the Iranians. I think the main takeaway beyond the fact of the leak, which in some ways is the biggest news here, it really shows in very concrete and specific terms how Iran has woven itself into every part of Iraq's life, especially since the 2003 U.S. invasion. So when the U.S. went in and toppled Saddam Hussein, it just opened the door for Iran to do something in Iraq that it had always wanted to do, which was essentially to get in there and control everything. The CIA's Baghdad station after the invasion became the largest CI station in the world. It was a very violent time. It was basically a combat zone. And the problem for the uh, CIA and for the US generally in Iraq during that time was it was very difficult for them to get out of the green zone or other protected areas. And they had to rely to some degree on the new Iraqi intelligence service that they built up. They kind of purged the old Iraqi intelligence, Saddam era intelligence service, and they built a new one. And the United States paid for it. And that was their the primary way in which they began to gather intelligence on the ground. The U.S. government is very short term in terms of how it views these kinds of conflicts and indeed these places. So the U.S. went in and, you know, the CIA cultivated this whole mass of spies and assets, sources and then they leave. You see in the documents several people who were Iraqis who had worked with the CIA who are now unemployed. So they go to the Iranians and say, I'd be happy to work with you if you pay me. And the Iranians in these documents are interested in talking to them. But the first requirement they have is that they tell them everything they ever did with the CIA. Iraqis who had worked for the CIA right. then become right. Iranian assets. I mean, right. that, that, that's going to make some people shit their pants at Langley, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. I mean, you, you covered the CIA yeah. for a long time. How are they going to... Oh, as you said, they're going to shit their pants. <laughs> you don't think that they have any, any clue that this has happened? They may have some clue, but I mean, to see it in writing like that, that's the, the, to me, the beauty of these documents or the power of these documents is, like, people will say, well, we knew that Iran had influence in Iraq. But to see it in everything in black and white in detail. It would probably be going too far to say Iran controls everything there. But what these documents show is that Iran has eyes everywhere. I went through the draft as it uh, exists now. And my, I mean, the first question I have about it is, how do you deal with the fact that this administration is going to look to weaponize anything that they can information-wise to justify 
going at Iran. That's something that we've been struggling with all along since you know we uh, got these documents. To me, the message of these documents, and I hope this is the way we've presented it, is the United States invasion of Iraq was a historic mistake, a strategic blunder of massive proportions. We invaded and Iran won the war. That is a lesson to be learned today in how we operate in the Middle East, what we do in the Middle East. It's a warning against further aggression in the region. I think it's really a good check on the idea that Iran is this wild and terrifying force in the world. One of the interesting things about this time period in 2014 and 2015, Iran and the US were on the same side. They were both fighting the Islamic State. There was almost like a, an unspoken understanding that the U.S. would focus on air power and the Iranians would focus on having these ground troops, their Shia militias. Iran is, because we know so little about it, because we have so little first-hand knowledge and access to it, it's portrayed as, you know, they, they see us as the great Satan, we see them as the great Satan, you know? They're this bloodthirsty, um, kind of terrifying regime. And what the documents show is that they're a lot like the U.S. government, at least the MOIS is. What the Iranians are doing in Iraq, according to these documents, is very much what the United States tried to do after 2003, which is they're grappling with an unruly country with deep sectarian uh, divisions and trying to kind of maintain stability for economic reasons because they want to have a, a good safe way for Iranians to go on pilgrimages to religious shrines, um, you know, because they want to sell their goods there. So it's very similar to what the United States has done all over the world. Iran had two adversaries on its borders. One was the Taliban, Afghan government, and the other was the Iraqi government, Saddam Hussein. Both were enemies of Iran. We deposed both of them. It's such a huge thing to admit to yourself as a country that everything we've done in Iraq for the last 15 years was a mistake. All these lives lost were in vain. All the money poured into there has gone for a misbegotten, tragic mistake that we have benefited what we now consider one of our biggest enemies. It's almost like it's such a huge thing to admit that nobody wants to admit it. And I think that's the real power of these documents.